back to Psalm 23, you know, when it talks about, you know, the good shepherd, he causes us to lie down in green pastures. It's interesting because in the Hebrew, it's not green, it's grassy. And so often in the Judean wilderness, it's a grassy patch with a lot of brown to the next grassy, grassy patch. Yeah. Right. And that's the imagery of Psalm 23. The good shepherd is the one who faithfully guides us from green patch, grassy patch through the brown to the next grassy patch. And all of a sudden I understood my life so much better. I've just been thinking about God as my shepherd in my life, certain times and seasons when I just needed Him. Um, in extraordinary ways to guide me, to lead me, the times I didn't know what to do, which way to go. And it reminded me of this story back in 2016. Janice knows some of this, but I had served in a certain ministry position for 17 years and just kept feeling the prompting to leave, but I didn't know what was next. And I was scared to death just to take that step by faith. And I knew I couldn't take it alone. I just needed to feel like the Lord was guiding me, taking me by the hand. And He gave me the courage to take the step and to resign from that position. And it literally felt like I just stepped into a wilderness. Wow. Um, having no orientation. I was raised, you don't leave a job without having a job, yeah. security. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, living in Franklin, Tennessee, it's not cheap to live there. <laughs> so not, being employed is, an important, is important, <laughs> Janice knows. <laughs> and it, so it just set me into this wilderness adventure, this journey with the Lord. And to be totally honest, y'all, I, I was struggling. I was waking up and when you don't have anything to fill your day, um, you're just left in your thoughts, just bouncing around in your head. And I was just asking the Lord. I was saying, Lord, I feel like I'm in a wilderness. I feel like I'm in a desert. I need you to be my shepherd. I need you to guide me. I don't know what I'm doing. I've taken this leap. Now what? And I went with some girls on a girls trip and we all fly a lot. I feel like I live half my life on an airplane and I will never forget this moment. It was a moment of desperation for me, honestly. But I remember getting on the plane, and after we took off, I put my tray table down, and I took out my Bible, and I didn't even really know what to read or where to turn. It was one of those seasons. I mean, is it a proverb? What is it that I even need? And so, y'all, I did that thing that we've all heard about. I opened my Bible, flying in the air, and I took my index finger, and it was one of those just, I need you to speak to me. And I just remember I'd been telling the Lord, I feel like I'm in a desert. I feel like I'm in a desert. I feel like I'm in a desert. And lo and behold, y'all, this is a true story. I just put my finger down and I looked down and it was Psalm 78 verse 19, which says, can God spread a table in the desert? Wow. Mm. wow. And I feel that moment in my body right now. Yeah. And all of my doubt, all of my fear, all of my insecurity and uncertainty and just feeling of being lost, the Lord met me on that airplane. And that became my theme verse for that season. And I would wake up in the morning, Lord, you are my good shepherd. You do know how to spread a table in this desert for me. I'm gonna make it through. You're gonna take me by the hand. And it changed my posture. It changed the inside of me. It gave me scripture to hang on to. I remember I wrote it on a little yellow sticky note and put it on my bathroom mirror. And I think back to that often every time I'm in Israel and I see shepherds with their sheep. I think about that story in my life now a few years back. But I'd love to hear some of your stories of just times you, you didn't know you really needed that sense of God being your shepherd and just what some of that's been like in y'all's lives. Yeah. The thing I love about that, though, is just the, the mercy of God. Yes. And He gets it, you know, when we're just in that place where it's like, Lord, I have no clue here. Yes. And it's it really is a step of faith to mm -hmm. step out when you don't know what the next thing is. And sometimes you think, well, the minute I step out in faith, God will reveal the next thing. And sometimes, as you say, it's a season, you know, you have to kind of go through that. I think what I love about the idea of God being our shepherd is this, even if you just take the best known shepherding Psalm, Psalm 23, mm -hmm. it's the first five words that get me. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Not just 
I have a shepherd, but the Lord. Mm -hmm. And not just the Lord is a shepherd, he's my shepherd. Mm -hmm. And and the Lord is my shepherd. And I've watched, um, I grew up in sheep raising country in Scotland, the west coast of Scotland, just field after field after field of white fluffy sheep. And (laughs) and it's watching the tenderness of shepherds with their sheep. And when I think, I've never seen a situation where a sheep has said to the shepherd, hey, I know you're going that way, but what do you think about oh, this? Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. that actually looks yeah. fantastic. Yes. And there's something about that, that the Lord leads us. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you don't realize you've been led. If nothing seems to be happening, mm-hmm. you don't even feel like you've been right. led. And yet, I and I guess it's because I'm mm-hmm. older now, but I take such comfort in like even today, I feel like I've gone through a season of maybe the last year where I just feel kind of dry. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I mean, I pick up my Bible and I read it because I know it's the living word of God. Right. And and I, I have a worship tape on my, you know, iPhone and mm-hmm. I play the playlist. But it's just the feel the feelings are not there. Mm-hmm. And so I cannot tell you, um, before we came out here today, I just I meditate on that. Yeah. The Lord is my yeah. shepherd. I think one of the most profound pictures that we get in Scripture that impacts me personally the most is this idea that Christ is the good shepherd. And having been in Israel not too long ago and just watching the way that shepherds care for their sheep, it just gave me this fresh sense of, I don't need to know exactly where I'm going. I don't need to know the next step. I don't need to know what tomorrow brings because the shepherd's going to lead me. And I think that's one of the greatest assurances for every single one of us. Even when life seems a little dark and we're not quite sure what's going on, we have a shepherd and it's his job, it's his responsibility to make sure that we take the next step and the next step until finally we've made it all the way home. It's so personal, the the my shepherd, it becomes so personal personal. But what I love also after that is I shall want for no thing because I I would be curious if from the moment that you got that scripture, you know, did everything change in that moment? I think what really happens in you is you recognize that though the circumstance may not immediately change so much, we're so sometimes so much about the destination, but we realize what he does in that moment is he gives us peace for the journey. However long that might be, he will every day create that table for you where you have peace to walk in that moment, in that day, with the peace that He gives you for that thing. And then over time, maybe, and you know, I'd be curious to know how long until you actually saw, saw fruitfulness from that decision, like, okay, now I have another job. Now, right. it, that could have been a week for some, it might be six months for some, but that doesn't mean you have to be in the wandering that whole time because right. because you lack for no thing when he's your shepherd. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting because when you said that and you, you said immediately, I felt that in my body mm-hmm. and that it's almost like you feel this reshuffling of your own DNA, reshuffling mm-hmm. of everything that you knew so that the category of evidence equals a new truth, right? When you are connecting with your shepherd and allowing yourself to be led, that's the body change is, wait a minute, like there's somebody in control and it's yes. not me yeah. and he's good mm-hmm. and he's faithful and he's trustworthy. And that does something to the inside of us. And I'm sure if somebody studied it scientifically, we'd figure it out. But there's something about that that brings that mysterious peace mm-hmm. that we learn about when we bring that anxiety to the Lord and we we bring our real prayer, which you did, and we bring real thanksgiving and truly pressing into who He is. And then we get into His presence and we get that peace that passes understanding, right. that reshuffling of yeah. the evidence so that we are not worried, even though nothing has changed. Yeah. So we all want to know now, how long was it? How long was it? <laughs> so I'll finish the story a little bit. because That's a great question, Belinda. So it was about six months, truly. And the Lord was faithful. The, the next thing started emerging. Yeah. But that six months, it was this liminal space. It was the space between there and there mm-hmm. where you your life feels a little bit on pause, yes. but it's still moving yes. and it's this weird dynamic. But back to Psalm 23, you know, when it talks about 
you know, the good shepherd, he causes us to lie down in green mm. pastures. Mm. It's interesting because in the Hebrew, it's not green, it's grassy. Oh, it's grassy pastures. That. And Me if you've too. been to Israel, I'm Irish. My last name's McClellan and I've been to Ireland. And so you think of these, you know, I used to read Psalm 23. Oh, you're going to make me lie down in green pastures. And it would be this lush, lush green. Yeah. I'm sure Scotland might be yeah. the same way. So I always yeah. envisioned that. And in that liminal space in my life, I did not feel like I was laying down in lush green. But when I was studying in Israel and I learned that, it's not green, it's grassy. And so often in the Judean wilderness, it's a grassy patch with a lot of brown to the next grassy Grassy patch. And that's the imagery of Psalm 23. The good shepherd is the one who faithfully guides us from green patch, grassy patch, through the brown to the next grassy patch. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I understood my life so much better. Mm -hmm. Cause I definitely have days where I feel like I'm in the green, but also have days I feel like I'm in the brown. And that liminal space, the living God was guiding me from green to green, from grassy to grassy and being faithful in the brown. And that just really spoke a word to me. Cause I don't know if y'all are, sometimes I'm like, am I just behind? Everybody else seems like they're just doing great. You know, and and that just helped me. I was like, oh, this is what Psalm 23, like this, this is more my life than me just rolling around and these lush green pastures. But it was six months and I could start crying, but he not only didn't fail me, but I came out of that liminal space Mm -hmm. different. A deeper faith, yes. a deeper trust. And I didn't know it at the time. I did. I felt like what was such a subtraction yes. was an addition mm-hmm. that God was actually Amen. adding to my fabric, adding to my faith, my substance. And so I'm just so grateful. Yeah. Um, that idea of, of patch to patch yeah. and all the brown in between, He knows it. I think sometimes when I'm in the valley, honestly, is when it's easiest for me to connect with the Lord. Um, I have a tendency to be in a pasture and think I'm, I kind of run on autopilot. So I, I check in with the Lord, but it's, if I'm honest, it's when I'm in the valley that I cry out to the Lord. Um, because I realize that whatever is going on is much bigger than what I can handle. So my hope and my desire for myself is that I would cry out to Him at all times and not just wait for the valleys, but it's in those times where I think I grow the most. Sometimes it's because we put a different word for as my shepherd. It's like, the Lord is my shepherd, but really it, my work is my shepherd, <laughs> or my family is my shepherd, yeah, my husband good. is my good. shepherd. And so when we put it in something else, we come back you know, not fulfilled. We're looking our direction and what we're looking to. The shepherd yeah. leads his flock. Yes. We're looking to the wrong thing to lead us. That's so true. And so what's cool about saying the Lord is my shepherd is because the Lord is the Lord. It puts things in proper perspective. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So if I'm looking to him, everything around is kind of like, I'm just, whether it's fire, whether it's lush, whether it's brown, whether it's whatever, it's like, I'm looking to the Lord as my shepherd to guide me. I looked up what, sh- what sheep are like. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that we're compared to sheep, I'm like, Lord, it's a little bit insulting. Um, but it's so true. Yeah, accurate. It's so, true. so accurate at the it's same accurate. time. Because a lot of times, I would yes. say for me, I think, do I need a shepherd? I'm doing pretty good. I mean, I think there's a posture that we have, like, wait, you've given me these talents. And I'm, it's, it's clothed in the Christian thing, right? Sure. You've given me all these talents. I'm going, I go, but it's like, but I got this, Lord. I don't really need a shepherd. I got this. And I think Psalm 23 reminds us that, no, you don't, Kirsten. <laughs> you ain't got it. You ain't got it. Like, got like it. sheep, our hearts are prone our, to wonder. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think when you say just those five words, like you've said, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Like that is who I'm looking to. Yeah. And it's nothing else around me yeah. that's really leading me in the way that I need to be led. I remember... Um, interviewing Kathy Lee Gifford and Rabbi Jason Sobel. They had just done this great series on in Israel. And Kathy Lee said, and it's kind of what you were touching on, that the thing she didn't expect was she thought she would see these green fields. Mm -hmm. And she thought, Lord, that doesn't really make sense. And then she watched as the sun go down. And she said the sun would suddenly hit on these little green patches. Mm -hmm. And she realized, no, the only one who actually can see where it is, is the shepherd. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of people right now who are in this place, like you were, and it's like... 
Lord, I can't see anything, you know, any place to go or anything to do. But it's developing this profound trust that, thank goodness that you do, that you know where the next, I can't even see, but you know where the next grassy patch is and you will get me there. Even in that Psalm, it talks about, I'll walk through the valley, you know? So it it tells us, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I mean, these are all things that speak to Mm -hmm. life may not be all roses and all, you know, these are things that are are real life things. And yet... What he reassures us there as the shepherd is he goes before us. He knows the terrain ahead and he's with us to give us peace to endure as we walk through the valley. I sure really wish it could have been written that as the shepherd, you'll never go to the valley. (laughs) That would have been better as he would have never let, we would never have to be led through a valley, but it doesn't work that way. But he just promises, and what Janice was saying earlier, he just promises peace. Yeah. I, I, even as you guys were talking, I'm thinking of when I have, in the times when I've put someone else in the place of the shepherd and decided I've got this, which by the way in America is so much easier to do without being called on. Right. So and true. maybe in other cultures, not so much, but in this culture that honors independence mm-hmm. and yeah. initiative is what we call it. It's like, you take initiative. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm out of line. <laughs> The shepherd is not, is, he's leading, but I'm not following, right? But it's almost because I have this idea that I saw a green patch over there. Yeah. And that's the one I want. That's right. true. That's that's think good. of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And that's often what derails me from following is, because um, even right now I'm in transition mm. and I'm thinking, mm. Lord, about that? that's a nice green patch yeah. over there. Yeah. Now that's a great green patch. <laughs> yeah. And the Lord's like, will you trust me? Yeah. Will you trust me to lead you? Will you actually be the sheep that you are, right? And lean not on your understanding, especially because it's nothing compared to mine. Like my husband and I, we often, our eldest um, is six. He's very, very smart. I'm talking like off the charts and not because we did anything. That's clearly what the Lord wants to do with him. And we just are trying to keep up. But because he's smart, And because he thinks well, when he gets into conversations with us about things he doesn't know, he still takes the posture that he knows. And he's like, Mm -hmm. but guys, let me tell you this. And we have to remind him like, baby, you are six years old. You're not double digits. Your skin is still brand new. Okay. (laughs) Compared to what mommy and daddy know, you don't know. And so then this idea of, I want that green patch or I want that green patch. And the Lord is like, Mm -hmm. baby, you are a sheep. Mm -hmm. Please don't lean on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to insult you. I'm trying to teach you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to bring you to a good place. And it's just, it's just so hard to think that our understanding is not sufficient, Mm -hmm. but it's not. I have learned to trust God in the middle of a transition by, first of all, a couple of practical things. One, doing spiritual disciplines that keep me connected to the Lord. Um, it's it's so interesting in a wilderness or transition season, which they're not always synonymous, but in a transition season, you might feel like you don't know what to do next, or you're not sure of all of the steps. And the reality is, is that just being close to the Lord will bring you the peace that you're looking for. I'm the type of person I think, I I tend to think that having the plan is what's going to give me peace. And the Lord always reminds me, know that it's, it's His presence that's bringing me peace. And so those spiritual disciplines help me to stay in the presence of God so that even in the transition, I can walk with peace. And the other thing is in transition, I have found it helpful to continue to do the last thing that he told me to do so that I know that, because sometimes waiting doesn't mean or being still doesn't mean doing nothing, but it, it does mean do what you've been asked to do until the Lord says to do something different. He'll modify his instructions if he needs to, especially if you are close and you're able to hear what he's saying in real time. Something else that I think about with that metaphor, it's just why did God use it so much? It's one of the greatest metaphors in the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation, to describe 
helm in us. And it makes me want to just lean in like, okay, Lord, what are you, what all are you trying to convey in that? But because you're in transition, I'm just going to look at you right now. But, me, and me. Sheila weigh in on this because <laughs> growing up with sheep, but just to encourage you, something that I learned in Israel about sheep, and you could talk mm-hmm. about it from Scotland, is when a sheep gets away from the flock yeah. and gets lost. And I mean, have we all felt lost before? Yeah. yeah. They don't turn around and try to go back. They hunker down and cry out to be found. Mm. Ooh, Ooh, now that'll preach. That'll preach. Mm. And Mm. I've thought a lot about that because you talk about in the transition, like, oh, that grassy patch looks good. That grassy patch, I think for me at times when I feel lost, I I so don't like the feeling of being lost. Mm-hmm. I start just looking for a direction right. so that I feel like I'm going somewhere. That's right. And it's really just encouraged me right. that God's not asking me to be smart enough, fast enough, whatever, to figure it out and to chart the path. Yeah. He's okay with me just hunkering down yeah. and crying out for Him to come find that me. Is, that is so... I, powerful. Mm-hmm. It, and it makes me think of like in Luke 15, where you've got the story of the three lost things, the lost coin, the lost sheep, the lost son. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, because you don't, the shepherd doesn't find the sheep halfway home, trying to find his way home. Right. He's lost. And it makes it clear from the way they put those three into, because Jesus said, he said, let me tell you a story, not three stories. It's the right. same mm-hmm. story. <laughs> right. And the coin couldn't find itself. No. So the sheep can either. But even in like John 10, yeah. I believe it is when it says, my sheep hear, yes, my, hear voice, my voice and they know me. Right. You yeah. know. And they're not going to follow another. No. Right. They know me and I give unto them eternal life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I love the idea that he will find the lost sheep. He will come after the one. He will. I Have y'all seen Maybe I'm on social media <laughs> too much, but there's a meme and it's this big like ravine kind of thing, cavern oh, yes. thing, and the yes. sheep is in it, and the, the guy is getting the sheep out, and he gets them out, and the sheep runs, and he turns and does a U-turn, and he hops right, right back, back in. in. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. this is me. Oh, like, this is me. This is, you know? <laughs> it's like that, but isn't that what we do? It's yes. like, rescue me, Lord. I'm yeah. not, I'm going to call out to you until you can rescue me. And then he does, and it's like, Oh, but hang on. Let me just go back to my old ways and do, you know, but, but he never, I mean, that he's so long suffering. Yes. Yes. You know, that the patience of God is never ending. That's what a shepherd, I mean, think about how patient a shepherd would have to be Yes. to, you know, hundreds of sheep that want to go their own way and, and has the ability to rein them all in. God is such a great shepherd and a shepherd of our hearts. But in my life, there's been times when I have allowed other things to come in and be that shepherd, maybe be that thing that's leading me. And really for me, the tricky part of that, it was always for something good. It was maybe in my mothering or in ministry, I would say those were the two most uh, apparent places where I would kind of in the name of what God's called me to do, place a great importance on my mothering or on ministry, which don't get me wrong, is right but it would begin to replace really letting God be the shepherd of my heart and really seeking Him for Him to guide me and to lead me and to let His Holy Spirit speak to me. I would begin kind of taking on the responsibility of leading my children or in ministry when ministry would call and and that would felt like I was doing something great for God. So it kind of felt like He was the shepherd, right? But really it was me wanting to, you know, move forward in ministry because that was my heart. And maybe not always stopping to just say, God, are you in this? Are you leading me here? And what I love about what God does in those moments is because really the posture of my heart, with the intention of my heart was to, to be doing what He wanted me to do. I just had um, maybe some misguided thoughts on how that should be done. And so He's a very gentle shepherd, right? He, with that rod and staff, he just kind of gently leads me back and reorients my heart to remind me that all of those things are good. And I think that's the tricky part. Sometimes it's not that we're choosing something so bad to replace him. It's the things that are good 
but they're not best. He is the best shepherd. He's really the only shepherd of our hearts. And when we surrender to Him, then all the other things have a great place in our life. I have discovered that probably one of the most important jobs for me as a believer is just to figure out how to follow, yeah. Yeah. how to hunker down and cry out, yep. how to find, how to listen for my shepherd's voice. And I just, I find it interesting, even in, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. Both ways he describes himself there has everything to do with his relationship to us. Right. And so I just don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss the fact that I am a sheep and my whole job yeah. is to follow. To follow. I, I think just growing up, you know, going to Sunday school and learning about the Bible and wanting to do well and wanting to, you know, be the teacher's pet. <laughs> you know what Number I mean? One. How, we wanting to wanting to be obedient. Um, you think to yourself, one day, you don't say it. You it might not even come form as a whole thought, but you Somewhere rum, rummaging around in your mind is the idea that I'll graduate to being something. But the reality is I'm not graduating to anything. The need will always be the same. Yeah. And my job is to learn how to follow better and better and better and more closely and more closely and more closely and listen more intently and listen more intently. and listen. It's literally that is my job to home in on where he is <laughs> and stay there yeah. until I wander and then home in again and stay there. Like that is the journey of realizing that he is in control and he can be trusted. Yeah. And my job is not to figure out the terrain like, oh, I've been down this road before. Yeah. I know which way we go, Lord. Got it. <laughs> line leader. Like we love to be line leaders, right? Like the little kids in elementary school and the Lord is like, he engages us, but our job is to home in closely and learn how to follow over and over again. Yeah. And because he's so brilliant and his brilliance has no end and his wonder has no end, we won't get bored. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's, it's, we won't get bored on this terrain yeah. following the master. We were in Colorado with my family. This was, my daughter is 17, but this was, she was probably five or six at the time. And we were hiking up, I don't even know the name of the place, but one of the high elevation places. And uh, Todd, my husband, was in front and she wanted to kind of be carried. She'd been, she was tired. I mean, she was young. And so he puts her on his shoulders to kind of carry, you know, as you yeah. uh, would if they're complaining enough, <laughs> if that's going to help, that's going to help the complaining. Right. So he puts her on shoulders. And so at this point, she has a little bit of better view than she did when she was down yeah. below. And so all of a sudden, you know, the complaining t turns into, hey, can we go, let's go over that way. Hey, dad, look, look over there, whatever. And finally, Todd said, hey, Evelyn, I'm just, I'm going to be dad, which means I'm going to continue leading us where we're going. And, and you're just going to, you're here to enjoy, you know, that, that was kind of that, yeah, you know, and right. it was like, okay, let me be dad. I know where we're going. The journey could be really fun if you would just know who's in control and who's supposed to follow. I would say I am still learning <laughs> to daily surrender to the Lord shepherding of my life and not to take things into my own hands. And that is not coming out of a place in me where I think I'm always right or that I know better or I can get this done on my own. I really don't want to rely or wait on the Lord to shepherd and guide and lead me. It really comes more from a place of scarcity, uh, of fear, I might even say, of if I don't figure this out, that I'm not going to figure it out to know the way to go. And it really is kind of the posture of an orphan. It's the posture of somebody who's left to themselves to figure out their lives. And we know that that's not the kingdom way. That's not the follower of Jesus way. It's not the church way that we're not orphans. We have a high and holy father and a very good shepherd who is here to take us by the hand and to lead us through our lives faithfully until we reach the shores of the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem that Revelation 21 and 22 talks about. 
And I think oftentimes that's probably the truth. When we take matters into our own hands, it can be pride. But I just know in my own life, the truth of it is it's usually always fear. It's the fear and that orphan that rises up that says, if you don't figure this out, you're gonna get left behind. You're gonna be lost forever. You're never gonna find your way. So when I think of surrendering to God as my shepherd, it's more relying on God to be my father rather than me living like an orphan. I think that's when it's almost easier to follow God. Like, you know, when yeah. things are good or that's either where I like, oh, I got it. I'm like on cruise control. But it's when things are hard. Yeah. Yeah, like I think about the time good. where I like needed my shepherd. We had two miscarriages back to back. Mm. And I was like, God, this wasn't the plan. Mm. Like we're, we're we're good Christian people. We want more people. We're not, you know, we're doing what we thought was right. And yet back to back, mm. Lord, you are leading me in a place that I never mm. thought we would go. I feel like that was a time where I'm like, you know, when things are good, it's like, oh yeah, he, I'm Let's go. Let's go try something new. I'll, I'll, wherever you lead, I'll go. And I'm like, but I didn't mean this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, I think yeah. oftentimes we're on this journey called life. Yes. Yeah. And we say, yes, Lord, but not this. Yeah. And I think in those places, he's showing us what shepherding really is. Because mm-hmm. um, green pastures are good, but that valley of the shadow of, the <laughs> shadow of death. Not so like, fun. Yeah, no. Not great. Can we go around? Is there a bypass to get to the next thing? And I think God's like, no, through this too. And you said, how do I stay on track? I think for me, and like the more you read, it's like prepare for the trial, prepare for the trial, prepare for the hardship. You know, be one with Christ as you're getting persecuted. And I'm like, oh, that's where some of that and a lot of that happens to where we say we stay connected. Yes. Because I feel like I will disconnect once things are, you know, comfortable or good. I feel like I... I don't want to say I disconnect. I see mm-hmm. God in it. Mm-hmm. But it's a different kind of on my knees praying yeah. Yeah. when it's something very challenging. I'm thinking about it. It's just like in that time, I was like, God, where are you? And he's yeah. there. Yeah. It's like, I want to see you. I want to see the good. I want to, I know you're a good father. I know you are kind and just and merciful, but show me that here. Yeah. And I think that's where I've clung to. Mm-hmm. Like I cling to him being a shepherd and leading because in my own like I have no words. Yeah. I have no direction. Yeah. I don't know what I don't I'm not sovereign. Um yeah. and I think that's you said, how do I stay connected? And you said, let me lead. It could be fun. He's like, let me lead. It might not be fun too. Yeah. But still let me lead. One of the things I love in Scotland is we have these sheepdog trials. Mm. And I would I loved to go to the sheepdog trials because you'll have this huge flock of sheep and a shepherd, and then you have these two dogs that come behind. And I mean, you watch them, they are phenomenal. You know, one sheep will be like, ooh, I like that patch. And the dogs are just, nope, we're going this way. And what I found interesting is when you study Psalm 23, those two dogs are in Psalm 23. They're called goodness and mercy. Mm-hmm. We will be dogged by goodness and mercy all the days of our life. It's so good. So even when we're like, you know, well, I think I'll go there. No, it's the, it's not even the judgment. It's the goodness and mercy of God that comes behind and redirects us to, no, this is this is where we're going. Yes. That because I can I can honestly say in every valley I've experienced, I've always been able to see His goodness, yes. and I've always been able to see yes. His mercy. Yeah. They are the guardrails. You're right. That's beautiful. Wow. And I think about how, thank you for sharing yeah. Um, yeah. a tender part of your life, but I even think about that goodness and mercy following, because not only did you and your husband experience those two miscarriages, but life has gone on. Mm-hmm. So how do you come out of something like that? Right. You know, taking those, those trials, those challenges, yeah. and it's like, okay, now that's part of my story. So as I live forward, but I love that connection to the goodness and mercy, mm-hmm. like hunting you down, yes. you know, even as you come out of those difficult seasons and live forward, because journaling has been an important part mm-hmm. of my faith journey, because pr- left to myself, I will remember the bad. Yes, mm. that's, that's I remember the things that have hurt me. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. My traumas, my hurts, my losses, right. Right. I feel them in my body, feel well, them in my memory. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so it's it's become really like a reflex of the kingdom of God being formed into me to journal wow. the good and to be committed to that. Like I will not scribe just the sorrows of my life. Right. I will scribe the goodness and mercy in the ways that 
He's so, been so faithful. That's it, yeah. And that's how you build faithfulness in your life anyway, mm-hmm. is by recounting and going back and remember every moment that He's been faithful. It gives you all the courage you need to walk in the current thing that mm-hmm. you're walking in. is because you can go, I know He's been faithful. I don't like to admit this about myself, and I hope I'm not the only one, but... Of course not. No, I don't know it yet, and I'm in. <laughs> We're already like, yep. <laughs> but I... I don't like the hard parts of life. Mm -hmm. But when I recount, when are the times in my life I have drawn in the most? I have surrendered the most. I have opened my heart to receive the most. I've been in the Word the most. Like, when are those? Mm -hmm. Generally, for me, it's in some of the valley. And and when things are going well, I sometimes become a little bit more line leader because Boy, things are are going really well, and I don't. It's, my heart isn't to stray. My yeah, heart isn't. Right. But it's interesting that you would think the hard things would make your heart stray. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes it's the good things mm-hmm. that right. you find you, you've strayed because you become a little bit more independent. Yep. And yep. and so I don't like the hard things, mm-hmm. but there is some fruit from the hard things I appreciate yeah. Yeah. that is formed in me. I don't think I understood the significance of Christ being our shepherd until I found myself in a very dark, dark place. And when you find yourself in a place, when you've lived your whole life trying to honor God, trying to do the right thing, and looking back on it now, I spent so much of my early Christian life doing that, trying to do the right thing, trying not to do the wrong thing. But when my life kind of fell apart and I was in a very, very low place, that's when I began to understand the significance of um, Christ as our shepherd. That even when you look in Luke chapter 15, when when Jesus is telling a story of what it looks like to be lost, starts with the lost coin, but then the lost sheep that somehow has wandered off, and yet the shepherd will leave the 99 and go and find that one lost sheep, no matter where you, where you are, and gather you up. And rather than judge you or ask you questions, he'll carry you all the way home. I was just reading this morning, and um, I think it's First Kings, about how it's about to be a lot of Boams, so just bear with me. But <laughs> the Boam boys, the Boams, <laughs> but how you know King Solomon passes away, and his son Rehoboam becomes king of Judah, and then Jeroboam, God says, "I'm tearing the kingdom from Solomon's line." and from Rehoboam, and giving these tribes to you. And the Lord had led him to a patch. And what does he do but try to be line leader? And he tries to control things, and in such a way that he leads people away from God. And so then, of course, he loses that privilege. But it is this idea of sometimes when things are going good, sometimes when God has done amazing things and led me to a great patch, I am inclined, like every other human being, to say, great, I'll take it from here. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that thing whew, yeah. is so dangerous, yeah. is so dangerous. And a lot of times I feel like we we read the Bible, we read the Bible and we think of heroes versus villains, and we just hope to be a hero, right? It's, there's something to me tied, that when I look at my, the culture around me and the nation, I think, it's a whole bunch of men wanting to be King David's around here. <laughs> and you are. <laughs> but I think to myself, I don't want to be Jeroboam, and I don't see myself in that. But to me, when I read the word, the point is to see myself in everybody so that then I can see how the Lord responds to everybody and remind myself of my need of God and that perpetual need because apart from the grace of God, I will most certainly take things into my own hands and I will most certainly try to be a line leader and mess things up terribly, sometimes egregiously, apart from the Lord stepping in. And so I think I don't want to be too precious with myself, right? And and I want to remind myself that there are people on the other end of my being a line leader. There are, yep. I mean, you think about Jeroboam and he decides, ooh, this is such a great patch. I never want to leave here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new temple. 
and I'm going to put idols there. That way the people won't ever leave me and I'll always get to be king. And it's like, and that had devastating consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I just want to acknowledge that, that if we don't fully see ourselves as sheep, mm. if we don't fully yeah. realize how incapable we are without the Lord, how wicked our hearts are without the Lord, how we are for real sheep. Mm. And I won't say just sheep because the price was set high yeah. and he died for us, right? Yes. But I will say we are sheep and we have the tendencies of sheep. And some there are many things that go against us really accepting that. Yes. Um, there are many things about our culture, about what the world will tell us that will let us know that uh, little sayings like, but you have a good heart. I, I don't, <laughs> unless <laughs> this heart has been changed and this heart has been replaced <laughs> with his heart. Like there, there are just lots of ways for us to ignore our sheepness. Mm -hmm. And then the line leader becomes the Jeroboam's and then it goes and the cycle goes down. And so I think in acknowledging who the shepherd is, we cannot miss that we are the sheep. I think of two other dogs, <laughs> the rod and the staff. Yeah. <laughs> so the yes. shepherd has two other things that protect yeah. us. Yeah. The rod to fight things off and the staff to pull the sheep off. Like they, yes. you know, so it's like, I'm already protected by the, my enemies. As I'm walking, the things that are going around me, mm -hmm. my shepherd is protecting me, yeah. mm -hmm. right? That's good. From people around. Mm -hmm. But the staff is the stuff that I do. <laughs> like it's almost like, you know, I get too close, the sheep gets too close, the staff pulls mm -hmm. the yeah. sheep back yeah. from, yeah. so from my own craziness, yes, right. think, wanting to, you know, be the whatever. <laughs> God's like, whoa, whoa, girl, hold up. That's a little pride. I'm pull you back a little bit. That's a little, that's, you know, like, or whatever. And I think that's the beauty of being the sheep. Yes. Yeah. Well, how the Bible talks about the rod and the staff, when I, when I looked it up as to why shepherds would even use this, um, these things for the sheep, it's the rod that fights off, they would use to fight off the things that were coming up against the sheep. So whether it was bears or wolves or any type of predators, the rod was used to defend the sheep. And the staff, which if you think about it, has a curve to it, was used so when the sheep would go too close to like a cliff or something where they weren't supposed to go, the shepherd could use the staff to pull the sheep back to safety or before they were stepping in a place that there was not they were not supposed to go. And so what's cool, since we are the sheep, is that I can find comfort in knowing that, that the Lord is using the rod to fight off my enemies, to fight off the things that are around me that either I can or I can't see. Um, and that's used for protection for the things that are around me. What's even more interesting is that he uses this the staff. And the staff is, is like when I make dumb mistakes. <laughs> like if I step in, I'm about to step into something that I shouldn't. Or... Um, if I'm about to go into an area or a place in my life that's not from God, that I know that He would use His staff to pull me back. And so just there's just comfort in knowing that I serve a God that that's, that, that is that big and that cares for me that much um, to not, all fight, not only fight off my enemies, but also fight off the things that I can sometimes put myself into. Don't you think it's interesting that Christ Himself identified as the Lamb of God? Mm -hmm. He didn't call himself the lion of God. He, he identified as a lamb. That's right. So I, I will never despise being a sheep That's right. because I think it's in ways that we don't understand till we see him, it is a holy identity. Yes. And it definitely alerts us to our weakness. It definitely makes us aware of our need for the shepherd. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he would identify as the lamb of God, the perfect lamb, spotless, sinless lamb, makes me think, yeah, I'm, I'm good. good with that. Yes. Yeah, that's what the price has been set high. And even the following that Jesus did on earth, following the Father. Yes. Yeah. Listening yeah. in close, being led. Yeah. Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. And the way that shepherds in Israel, I mean, back then they, they knew the they had names for most of their sheep. They right. knew them. And I love the fact when it talks about oil being poured, you know. Um, that that would keep all the things like sometimes sheep would have little animals that would dig into their skulls and, and you know, and the shepherd would pour them with oil, anoint them with oil because it got rid of all of that and it protected them. And then one of the pictures I just love the fact that the shepherd 
if we do also use that staff to count the sheep as they came in, mm-hmm. make sure that they're all okay, that they all came in, and then lie over the opening. And the message is so clear. If you want to get to them, you're going to have to come through me. Mm-hmm. Which is just, I don't know, we are loved more than we will ever be able to understand the sight of his face. Yeah. I love that, like lie over the opening. Yeah. Yeah. To get to them, you're going to have to get to yeah. me. That's that John 10 imagery, the sheepfold. Yeah. You know, I think that, I mean, maybe as we're coming to our end today, it's that hopefulness that we're all going to fool around and make it mm-hmm. because of who God is. <laughs> Not because of us, you know, Ew. fully because of him. You know, he, he's counting us. He's guiding us. He's leading us. He's taking us from grassy patch through the brown to grassy patch. And I do think about how fundamentally it's a relationship of listening. Yeah. You know, you mentioned John 10 when Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, because you can watch sheep scatter mm. and a shepherd, he'll make a ticking noise. It's not even a word. It's just mm. a ticking noise. Wow. And they will all turn around and go yeah. back. Wow. And I just think about, Lord, do I listen to you that acutely? Yeah. Yes. Do you just have to tick and I'm at attention? And like oriented towards you because I want to be that way. Yeah. So I think about as we come to a close today, just there's probably people out there that are in transition like you. Maybe feel like they're in a brown spot between the grassy pastures that need that sense of goodness and mercy coming for them. Maybe coming out of challenging season, you know, with a deepened faith. I love the story of your daughter and your husband. Just I'm going to be dad. You're going to be, you know, and just trying to find the place. But if the Bible can be counted on, and all five of us would say it certainly can, then we have five full lifetimes lived of the faithfulness of God as our shepherd. And so we just want to hope, faith, love, and pray today. So let's just pray. Um, Father, the five of us sitting here today, we just thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. And for everyone just joining in on the conversation today. Lord, you as the great shepherd, you alone know where each one of us is right now in life. You alone know what we're going through. You know the highs, you know the lows, you know the in-betweens. Somebody listening today, they're at a grassy patch and we thank God for that. But somebody listening today, they're in a a brown space, um, trying to think back to that last grassy patch and hoping they're going to know another grassy patch in this world. And so, Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, I pray that you would tune all of our ears to hear you today, to listen to your voice, that if we feel lost, that we would hunker down and cry out to be found that that goodness and mercy, that it would hunt us down, find us again and anew today. Lord, we wanna walk with you. We are so honored to be the sheep of your pasture, to be sheep of your flock. And I so Lord lead, guide and direct us. You have never failed us. Um, You won't fail us all of our remaining days on this earth. Lord, we love you. Thank you for being our good shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. Connect with us on social media and let us know how our team can pray for you. Y'all, we are here answering your questions behind the scenes today at Better Together. So our viewer Jacqueline emailed us this question. You ready? I'm ready, Jacqueline. How do I listen for God's voice after I've prayed and I'm waiting to hear His words? Oh, that's a great question. Um, The first thing that comes to my mind is there is no wrong way to listen. Um, I think that we can be relaxed as children of God, trusting our Father to be fatherly with and toward us. So a few things in my life is if I'm praying about something, I will go on intentional walks through my neighborhood. I don't take technology and I walk and I tell the living God, okay, you've got me right now. If you'd like to say something, I'm dialed in, I'm tuned in, I'm all here. 
but rarely does the living God just answer me on one of those walks. So I would say it's also about living our lives tuned in to hear when and as he's speaking. And for me, there's just this impression, this sense of peace and shalom. All of a sudden, I just know the way I'm supposed to go and I feel peaceful in it. And so I would say, look for peace, look for that shalom, don't stress out. It is less about you listening. It is way more about his faithfulness in speaking and guiding and governing and leading your life.